Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm here with my beautiful wife. Gloria, George. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I told you sometime um, last week or two weeks ago that you should join me in prayers that we will be able to do this broadcast that will talk about family, talk about marriage, and God answered your prayer. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are here now, and make no mistakes about this. I know what it takes to get my wife to sit down to do this recording with me. <laughs> you will not understand. <clears throat> not in badge, but you, 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 well, you, you wouldn't accept you have Gloria George. Praise <laughs> God. Praise <laughs> God. So, all right. Now, oh before, before we begin this broadcast, we will not forget to do what the Lord has commanded us to do on mm -hmm. this broadcast. Mm -hmm. Can we call for our daily, daily bread? bread. Yeah. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes, Now, sir. I don't know what you're expecting. This is the month of February. I'm expecting a lot from heaven. Mm, same here. Now, if you are expecting a lot from heaven, then join me right now. And let's make this demand. Say, Father. Father. I demand right now. I demand right now. My daily bread. My daily bread. It is coming to me now. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now then, we are just going to trust God to touch on different areas where we 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 celebrated our 10 years wedding anniversary a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And we got married on the 26th 26? of January, 2013. 18. And so 26th of last month, made it 10 years in marriage. Mm -hmm. 10 years, four wonderful children, children and a lot of experience in between. Yes. A lot of experience in between. Mm -hmm. And we, we just trust God will be, will be as plain as possible we, we can be to you. And why you're listening to us? We're not coming up to say rule number one, mm -mm. rule number two. Because mm -mm. I'll tell you the truth. We had no rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just had Christ. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember when, uh, before we got married, we went mm -hmm. to see Apostle Israel Abam. Okay. And he said something very amazing that have never left my mind. He said in marriage, throw out every expectation. Mm -hmm. And we did that. Mm -hmm. we, we took that literally like, you know what? Let's, let's just put out everything and let's start this journey. Now, while we're talking, you will understand what that means. But then, maybe I should give you the opportunity to start. So where do we start from? <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> it's very fast, but... <clears throat> From the onset. Now, my beginning. Okay. This is my beginning. I remember that day because I was a pastor in fellowship in on campus. And so we had this service. Mm -hmm. And after that service, that's so what year was that? You should remember the first your first year in school. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you remember? <laughs> it's your was, first experience. No, no, no. no. I, was, I was about, that was when I was leaving. <laughs> so it should be, you should remember first year Oh school. my goodness, which year is good. that now? Now, so I, I think that was like 2000. 2002 or no, 2003. Like four? No, maybe 2000. Anyway, mm. so we had, we had fellowship. And after the fellowship, I didn't preach in that no, you didn't. I didn't you took that to the yeah. 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 So, yeah. Now, after fellowship, I think that was the first time we were deciding to start um, new, was. new in uh, oh, yeah. hundred level, hundred level freshers, uh, freshers yeah. fellowship. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. so we asked all the new intakes, all the hundred level students to gather after the meeting. Yes. And then, and I was to address everyone yes so i stood in front uh faculty of vet medicine vet okay. medicine theater okay, okay. yeah faculty of vet medicine yeah that one okay. you know that their theater that's elevated it's like it's that. yeah yes. so I, I stood in front to address everybody mm -hmm. now while i was doing that i i saw you 
end. Now, understand this. It is not, it has nothing to do with love or anything. As I saw you, I just heard the Lord say, that's my daughter. Take care of her for me. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly how I heard it, that's now, 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 this is it. That's not the first time the Lord is telling me something like that. Yeah. There are different that he'll point out people to me, say, take care of this one for me or do this one for me. So that's just how simple it was. You know? okay. That's my, in the midst of every, all those people that were gathered yeah. there, the word of the Lord came to me. I said, that's my daughter. Take care of her for me. And I remember I came to whisper to you, mm. you know, I said, see me after, after the, the, the meeting. The meeting yeah. yeah. Now that's how we met. Mm. Now I'm saying this to say, what brought my attention to her was not because oh she was the first time that I came to fellowship yeah. and then several people came, mm -hmm. but because the word of the Lord came. actually came and said, yes. this is my daughter, mm. take care of her for me. Mm. And I literally did that. <laughs> I really tried. God. I remember telling you that I said from today in this school, mm. I'm your father. Yeah. Uh -huh. If and anybody. I ran. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you run? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I ran. So should I talk about my yes, beginning? Yes, yes. Talk about your beginning. Okay. My beginning is quite vast. And when I saw Pastor, I call him Pastor now because then he was Pastor. Before that time, I just moved on campus. I was actually staying off campus with a family that, you know, were caring for me. And then when my accommodation came through, I and a couple of friends who were like, okay, let's just try out fellowships, you know. We don't know the exact fellowship we want to go to, but let's just try out some fellowships. And then I remember telling them that, oh, my elder sister talked about, you know, campus fellowship of Christ Embassy. And back then, I was attending Christ Embassy with her at home. So I was like, okay, why don't we try out this campus fellowship today and then the next sunday we are going to try out another fellowship and then the upper sunday we are going to try out another fellowship and then we will now re yeah, sit down yeah, and hunting. tell ourselves <laughs> <laughs> we will now say okay this is where we want to go so as god would have it the first fellowship we decided to try out was um, believers love world and then we set out to go to church that day and when i entered the auditorium coincidentally my husband who was then a pastor was you know reading the rhapsody of realities when i walked in so there was something about his voice that took my attention right from the entrance so when i got in and i sat down i just fastened my eyes on him and what got my attention was the passion with which he was reading that rhapsody and the words that he was talking you know about i was like ah, ah this person talks about so god so about god so intimately so personally like it was different now i would like to call myself a church girl like i was like always going to church that was where i really found a lot of comfort in life so i was regular in church but i i wouldn't say then that i had a personal like one-on-one -on -one relationship with god i used to hear god because i had told god before going to school that i needed a father i told god i said lord i need a father because somehow in my young mind i i understood that i would need a guide in life my earthly father took ill when i was pretty young and before he took ill i was very very close to him so when he took ill i kind of like felt the void and unconsciously i started looking for a father figure in the lives of my friends back then in church or you know like uncles you know but somehow there was just it, it just didn't click and i prayed to god i said god you know what i just need a father figure someone that can guide <coughs> me through life because somehow i just realized that the world was too big for me and it was my first time of having to leave the house you know to go to school i was the like one child that did the primary secondary at home so university was like going out of home and then i i was born and brought up in cross river state calabar and here am i in zaria 
God sent me all the way. I like to say God sent me because that was not my dream school. I wanted to go to UNN, that is um, University of Nigeria and Nigeria Soka. But my dad was like, mm -mm. he wants me to go to ABU. My mom was like, that is too far. So we had a deal. I was going to do IJMB and I was going to write JAM. And then when I wrote JAM, I passed, but then the process of admission wasn't easy. So I didn't get the admission. And then my dad was like, okay, you're going to do IJMB. So I did IJMB and coincidentally, I met someone there that came for invigilation and he was a professor, kind of like someone that really had influence in ABU. Okay, let's, let's go yes. To. And then he, he is, is my <laughs> beginning. So okay. God is in the details. I kind of like, like details because when you, when you, when you follow God step by step, and you realize every detail that he leads you through mm -hmm. it kind of like solidifies your faith and makes you more resolute to keep following him because those things are looking significant actually they are very important, very important. along the way so to cut the long story short i eventually got to abu and there i was re i had prayed this prayer but then i didn't know how god was going to bring it to pass so i just trusted that okay let me just keep following God. You know, let me just keep following this voice that has been leading me as a child. I didn't really know that that voice was actually like God's, like, you know, when the you say God, um, that personal relationship with God, it wasn't to me like that. It just felt to me like I had this assurance, this knowing that anytime I talk to God about something, it just used to come through for me, you know. So when I got, you know, to fellowship that day and I walked into the auditorium, I heard his voice. The voice sounded like the voice that has been talking to me, oh. you know, guide, guiding me. It was more intimate than just going to church and listening to someone preach or just picking up my Bible and reading, you know, or just like, oh, okay, someone is talking about God. Let me just listen. So there was a chord that struck inside of me and I fastened my eyes on this man. And I'm like, this man is talking about God so personally. I want to know this god that this person is talking about <laughs> and that's why i just sat down listened to him and then after service i was so excited about the service i was so excited about everything in that fellowship i was in love i, I felt like i came home so immediately they said um the announcement was passed that yeah. all the first time i should you know wait behind i did not hesitate my friends were like ah i thought you wouldn't we were supposed to i like don't worry guys let me just let me just stay so i stayed back and i was seated up there you know in that um theater, the theater yeah way up you know the the seats kind of like ascend so i was sitting up and coincidentally this pastor that was reading the rhapsody so personally was the one that was addressing us so i sat down listened to everything that he had to say and then when he walked up to me, whispered in my ears that I'm, I should see him after the meeting. I was like, what for? Somehow <laughs> I just, you know, felt that resistance. Like, mm -mm. remember that I'm just a new student in school. <laughs> I was a fresher, I was young. And we've heard so many stories about the North. We've heard so many stories as children about men. <laughs> so when I heard, see me after service i was like okay yes sir immediately after the meeting i just dodged as i was about to escape i just heard someone say gloria Yang." <laughs> hold on there i said okay yes sir so i stood there and i remember you you called one sister in fellowship then sister lara toba coincidentally we were in the same hostel so you told her that she should make sure she brings me to you and then kind of like just put an eye on me. And that was our beginning. I think Please. I should put a pause there. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Before we go for that. Well, now that's how we met. Now I'm telling you that. And that's how she became my daughter in school. And literally, like I said, I heard the Lord said, take care of her for me. Mm. And that was literally what I made up my mind to do. And of course, God helped us. Yes. And that's how we started getting 
close. Yes, I and remember, you know, we used to have this 100 level meeting. fellowship. Yeah, and then exactly. coincidentally, you were the one pastor, exactly. direct pastor. So when this sister, you know, started checking on me, I was still trying to be careful, trying to like check my spirit. You know, then I wouldn't say he was the father figure. I wouldn't say at that time that that was the father that God was, you know, I was talking to God about. I arrived at that conclusion in the process because of the little things that began to happen. This person was very particular about my progress. He was very particular about my growth spiritually. I had so much questions to ask. I had so much things that I wanted to challenge my faith for. And I saw him living the life. I saw him talking about it. And then in our, in our fellowship meetings, then he used to give us targets, like yeah. when you teach us about something. And the first thing he ever taught us about was faith. How to put your faith to work. He would like, I'll ask God for money and money will come to me. I'm like, how? How is that possible? How is that possible? So I told myself, you know what? I want to experience these things. So I was like, Lord, I want my own testimonies. I want my own testimonies. And I think the first thing also that struck me was speaking in tongues. I didn't know how to speak in tongues. And I met these young people. They were so passionate about God. They loved God. They were, ah, their intimacy with God was just blowing my mind. I'm like, ah, ah. I thought I've been going to church since. So see these people, they'll be quoting scriptures. They'll be praying so passionately when they are speaking in tongues. Ah, ah. I told God, I say, every time I'm praying, I want to speak in tongues. Father, open my mouth to speak in tongues. Open my mouth to speak in tongues. And then eventually I started speaking in tongues. And then that there was this particular meeting we had for freshers. And then you challenged us that we're going to, you know, have testimonies, money-based testimonies, based as a result of our faith that mm -hmm. we should talk to God about it. So we all talked to God about it. And then, you know, we set out into the week and... I think it was either the next day. I think our meetings used to be in the evening. I know it was not on a Sunday. It was on a weekday. But in the course of the week, I remembered and I, I told God, I said, I really want to know you, especially when it has to do. So there was like two specific things I told God I wanted to know him about speedily. And that was my health and then also money. Because I needed money so bad. My family was going through a lot. Daddy was not feeling well. All the things that we used to enjoy was kind of like on hold. And I knew I needed money in school. And I, I didn't want to get it the wrong way. So I told God, I said, God, this person is sharing so many testimonies about money. I want my own testimony. And on this faithful day, I went to, you know, back in the days, you have to go check the, uh, your account. Like if, if money has been sent to you because we didn't to get alerts then. So I got to the bank and then I told them to check for me and they checked and they were like, oh, you don't have any money in your account. The man that was seated so there. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Thank you. So as I was about to go, he called me back and he was like, do you need money? I said, obviously, that's why I came to check. So he said, okay, I'm going to give you some money. And he counted mint. 5,000 Naira. He said, that's for me. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Just give me a few minutes. <laughs> this check thing that was always in my spirit with people trying to be nice to me. I, my spirit was always on check, like, you know. So I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I went outside. I called. I called my pastor then, which, who is now my husband. I called him. I said, sir, sorry. There is this person that... <laughs> told me at the bank that he wants to give me money and he actually counted the money for me but i told him to hold on like i don't know what he wants with me oh i don't want to get any money from a stranger i don't know this man i don't know why he wants to give me money and you said didn't we pray that we're going to receive money by faith this week and that struck me i said oh thank you jesus so i went back to him i said please Thank you. I'm grateful. So he was like, okay, go to the canteen, take food in my name and all of that. And anytime you want to eat, you should come back. <laughs> but as a wise girl, I just took the money and thanked him that they ate. And I was not going to live my life dependent on a man. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that's, that's one thing, speaking on faith. Sometimes yes. you ask God for something. 
And this is what challenges a lot of people. You want to kind of determine how, how God will go about it. Do that thing yes. that you've asked him for. Yes. But it doesn't work that way. Yes. And secondly, when God starts out, mm. don't let fear stop God, you. Yeah. Because of course, as a lady, mm. if a guy gives you money, the natural thinking, and that's because of how the world has have been framed. And been the words framed, that exactly. we've been receiving exactly. growing so up. You know? As a young lady, mm. someone is giving you money. First thing you're thinking about is, Ah, this might be beyond yes, money, money or just yes. giving me something yes. who gives free money, money. these ah. days uh -huh. but you know this is the point having that self-confidence in yourself yes that i cannot misbehave uh -uh. because uh -huh. now now first of all you didn't go asking the person for, for money, money so yes. please give me money uh -huh. so the person on his own called and said look take uh -huh. it still gives you the advantage yes but because of low self-esteem, now that's why we teach people the word of God, because yes. this is what the word of God does to you. It builds your esteem. Yes. So low self-esteem now makes you feel because somebody gave you money, mm. you owe your life to, person. to that person. Yes. You want to no. now stop there. You I, understand? No. You know? The truth is God used you today. And that doesn't even mean God will use, use you, you tomorrow. tomorrow. Exactly. And that's exactly. another thing. So the yes. fact that God has used somebody today, mm -hmm. even if, like if they said, look, anytime you need, come and tell me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean not tell yourself, I've mm -hmm. seen my destiny helper. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. got to allow God to, to do lead. his yes. thing. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that's that's the foundation of faith. That's, you know, we're, we're trying to put, bring that past, bring that background mm -hmm. to let you see that our, uh, 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 our meeting was by faith, yes. number one, number two. And all this while, there was no single thought about marriage, marriage. Or, Far from me. Far from or, or thought me. about relationship mm. or, or things like that. Mm. Now, I mean, she was just this child, to be sincere with you. <laughs> she was just, and literally a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Oh, everybody, everybody around you that ah, this is this one is pastor's baby. <laughs> like, ah, this is, and and every, every small thing, Aww. water must drop. <laughs> <laughs> I still do it in natural way now. <laughs> so, so it's just uh, okay, Father, you gave me this body. <laughs> <laughs> I received grace <laughs> to carry it, you know. And it was like that and until, of course, after school. Mm. Now, I had left, and you left school and came and said, Oh, God said, you should come work with, with me. With you, yeah. And I said, Ah, okay. Mm. Well, this is what I'm it doing. Mm -hmm. And if this is what God has said, oh, let's see how it, it works out. Yes, yeah. yeah. And yes. it was now, um, pastor and staff yes. relationship mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. it moved to pastor and staff relationship. Mm. And of course, another teaching process began. and learning process began. began. And also, and all this while, no thoughts on whether this is the one mm -hmm. or not even. Now, it's so bad that when God spoke to me and said, this is your wife. I say, never. Because <laughs> because now I've known I've known her to be this oh, this child. You know, so this person I'm teaching everything. Literally, I taught her everything. everything. So about God, what kind of marriage Lord. would that be? Yes. <laughs> like like your that's not the kind of imagination I had. You know, like what challenge will she bring into my life? You know, that's that's my thinking then. I'm like, no, Lord, you 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 can't do this to me. And then even even you too. I remember when I eventually told you this is what I, I will never forget the first thing you said to me. He said, Pastor, why do you want to confuse my life? <laughs> Listen, our time is up for today. Like if you leave us, we we'll just go. On, on and on. on. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, we should have done cut, this live. We even cut so many details up anyway, to this point. Let's see how we'll get back to This is just that. for today. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and I pray you're learning from this. Because mm. we have to stop here yeah. now. So digest this and get ready for tomorrow's 
podcast. Um, for tomorrow, yeah, because yeah. we're going to continue tomorrow. And like I told you, we're going to be playing with you and share our experience. And let's see how the Lord will help, help you with it. I Praise you God. Too. Can we pray for? Father, we pray for everyone watching and listening. Amen. That your love will fill their hearts. Amen. Lord, everyone that carries in them the desire to get married, mm. or everyone that carries in their heart the desire to be in a good marriage, mm. we ask that your word will be fulfilled in them. Amen. You have helped us. Mm. We ask that you help them. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.